In this problem, we have to write these parametric equations in rectangular form and give a sketch and indicate the orientation. Let's go ahead and work through it. Solution. So whenever you have uh, trig functions like this, the strategy is to solve for the trig functions and then use an identity. So to solve the first equation for sine of 2 theta, we'll just divide by 2. So that'll give us the sine of 2 theta is equal to x over 2. Over here with the y, same thing, except we divide by 6. That gives us the cosine of 2 theta is equal to y over 6. So now we use a familiar identity from trig that says sine squared of 2 theta plus cosine squared of 2 theta is equal to 1. So sine of 2 theta is x over 2. So if you square it, you'll just get x squared over 4. Cosine of 2 theta is y over 6. So if you square it, you'll just get y squared over 36. And this is equal to 1. And this would be the rectangular equation. So it's just a clever technique. So again, whenever you have a sine and a cosine or even other trig functions, you always want to solve for the trig functions and then use an appropriate identity. In this case, uh, we had sine and cosine, so we used uh, this identity here. And this would be the rectangular form. So this is the graph of what's called an ellipse. You can tell because we have a plus sign and the numbers on the bottom are different. So whenever we have uh, an ellipse, what we want to do is find A. So in an ellipse, A is always the square root of the bigger number. So in this case, A is the square root of 36, which is equal to 6. And b is the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. So let's go ahead and graph it. So there's the y-axis. There's the x-axis. So again, in an ellipse, a is the square root of the bigger number, so it's 6. And because the bigger number is under the y, the major axis is vertical. This means that we go up and down by 6 from the center, which is 0, 0. And then we'll go left and right by 2. So here's 2, and here's negative 2. Then you just connect the dots and make it look like an ellipse. So if the 36 had been under the x, uh, it would look like a, a laying down egg. We would have gone left and right by 6. So again, in an ellipse, a is the square root of the bigger number. And if a is under the y, then the major axis is vertical, so it looks like our graph does. If the bigger number is under the x, it looks like this, it's horizontal. The last thing to do is find what's called the orientation of the graph. So to do that, we'll make a table of values. So I'm going to come over here and make a little table. So we have theta, then we have x, and then we have y. And we just need to pick uh, some nice values of theta. How about uh, 0, uh, pi over 2, and pi? Just nice numbers to plug in. So if we plug in 0 for the x, we get sine of 0, which is 0. And if we plug in 0 uh, for the y, we get 6 times uh, cosine of 0. So we just get uh, 6 times 1, so we get 6. So when theta is equal to 0, we're up here at uh, 0, 6. So this point here corresponds to theta equals 0. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rewrite these because the canceling of the 2 and the 6 makes it look a little bit confusing. So let me just rewrite these before we go further. There we go. So we're looking at these, this x and, and this y. All right, plugging in pi over 2 here, um, we're going to get 2 times pi over 2. So you get the sine of pi. So the sine of pi is 0, so this is 0. Plugging in pi over 2 here, we get 6 cosine of pi, because the 2 and the pi over 2, the 2's canceled. Cosine of pi is negative 1, so this is going to give us negative 6. So at pi over 2, we, we are down here at 0, negative 6. 
that doesn't really help us because it doesn't really tell us uh, which way we went. Did we go clockwise or did we go counterclockwise? Let's try pi, and I get the feeling that pi is not going to help us either, so we're going to have to pick a, a different angle. If we plug in pi, we get the sign of 2 pi, which is 0. Boom, so we get 0. Plug in pi here, we get the cosine of 2 pi, which is 1. So we just, we're back at 6. So we're back here again. So we still don't know, you know how to go from one point to another. So let's try something between 0 and pi over 2. Let's try plugging in pi over 4. We plug in pi over 4, we get 2 times the sine of 2 times pi over 4. That's 2 times the sine of pi over 2. The sine of pi over 2 is 1, that puts us at 2. If we plug in pi over 4 into the y, we get 6 cosine 2 times pi over 4, which is pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so all of this is 0. So now we know we are here. So let's backtrack. We first plugged in 0, and that put us right here. Let me use a different color. So right here. And then the next value of theta in increasing order would be pi over 4. So now we are here. And the next value in increasing order would be pi over 2. So now we are here. See, this is theta equals 0. This is theta equals pi over 4. And then this is theta equals pi over 2. So you see how the values of theta are increasing. So we go from 0 to pi over 4 to pi over 2. So it looks like the orientation here is going to be clockwise. It's a nice problem because when we first tried to do it, we noticed that just using these three values, 0, pi over 2, and pi, we kept jumping back and forth between these two vertices of our ellipse. So that indicates nothing. So we needed to pick an intermediate value uh, for theta in order to really identify the orientation. I hope this video has been helpful.